It says prophecy alert. On September 22nd and 23rd of 2024, the United Nations will host the Summit of the Future, where nations will sign the Pact of the Future, creating the coming One World Government. The Summit of the Future website says the Pact for a Future will be a world system. And it, it's right on the website. It's right on the website. I've seen the website. UN member states are also likely to vote to change the UN itself very radically in what some are calling the United Nations 2.0. Additionally, a UN document on the summit of the future titled, What Would It Deliver? calls for a global financial system that works for all, the Great Reset. With the zero draft of the Pact for the Future and Climate Governance Commission's 2023 report, the Club of Rome calls on all nations to declare a planetary emergency and adopt a planetary emergency plan. Everything is lining up according to scripture for the end time great tribulation. It's fascinating. And when you realize like, you know, on September 23rd, 2017, many people think the Revelation 12 happened. The Revelation 12 sign happened in the stars. Um, I happen to lean that way and believe that. But this summit of the future and this signing lands on the exact seventh anniversary of that date. I find that fascinating. It just makes me say, am I like, you know, going to name a day and say, well, that means we're going to be raptured. No, but I'm just saying like everything for the end times is lined up. Keep your eyes to the skies. We're there. I just think we're there. We're waiting. All right. Yeah. These are, these are really remarkable, fascinating times to be alive. I was, uh, thinking this morning I, w I I just think <laughs> if you got to choose when you got to live like I would never choose any other time period than this right now that's how incredible I think it is to be alive in these last days I know it's hard and it is hard and the spiritual attacks are are just crazy they really are they're hard but Jesus is better and he has a plan and we're living in these last days waiting for him, waiting for the rapture of the church. And so many Christians are waiting to endure because they think they're going to live through the seven-year tribulation. It doesn't take too deep of a study of Revelation to realize you don't endure the seven-year tribulation. It's so, I just, you know, we are not appointed to wrath. The seven-year tribulation is the time of Jacob's trouble. It's Daniel's 70th week. It's about Israel and God. It's not about the church. That's why we were removed. That's why the church after Revelation chapter 3 is not mentioned. Revelation chapter 1, 2, and 3, it's church, 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 church. And then the beginning of chapter 4 has come up here. And then you don't hear about the church until way, 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 way later. But none of the seven years do you hear about the church. You hear about tribulation saints. And you hear about Jewish people turning to Jesus. And you hear about tribulation saints that turn to Jesus. People that you talk to today about Jesus and salvation and the rapture. And they don't believe you today. But when you're disappearing, they fall to their knees and cry out to Jesus. Those are tribulation saints. The question, the, the major question is, are you going to be going in the rapture are you coming with us well how do i do that you have to trust and believe in what jesus did for you two thousand years ago he died for your sins he paid for them with his blood precious blood see blood has to be shed in order for sin to be removed there has to be shedding of blood that's the system the most high god set up from the beginning because that's how serious sin is so in the Old Testament, they would take the lambs and they would slaughter them and they would sprinkle the blood in the Holy of Holies and it would cover their sins for a year and they'd all go out celebrating and I've always said they probably sinned that first night. You know, I can guarantee you they did. But their sins were covered for a year. But Jesus is so different because he's the Lamb of God. He's the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Jesus did a once and for all payment for sin. And Jesus left a throne in heaven to come here to die for you so that you could have eternal life. 
Because once you realize he came here and he lived perfectly and he came here to shed his blood and that every sin you've ever committed was placed on him when he was on the cross. And when he died, he said, it is finished because the sin debt had been paid in full. And then he was placed in a tomb and he rose again. He was alive again. He rose again the third day and he was seen by over 500 people. Jesus came here, the Lamb of God. He came here to be the perfect sacrifice, the once for all payment of sin. He's never going up on the cross again. Not another drop of blood needs to be shed. That blood has the power to remove everyone's sin if they would only believe in him. Because once you say, Jesus, I admit I'm a sinner. I know I'm a sinner. I need these sins paid for. And I believe your precious blood that you shed is the payment for my sins. So I have faith in the blood that it will remove my sins as far away from me as the east is from the west. And I believe in your finished work, that you went to the cross, you died, you were buried, you rose again the third day. Jesus, you're the savior of the world. And I know I will never get to heaven if I don't say yes and believe in that payment you made. If I don't, if I don't have faith in the blood and I don't believe in your finished work, I have no shot of heaven because you're the only way you're ever going to go to heaven. It's not a list of you got to do this, do this, do this, and don't do that, don't do that. You have to understand that God sent his only begotten son to pay for your sins with his blood. And once you say, Jesus, I'm a sinner and I believe in the blood and I believe you are perfect. I believe you were the only begotten son of God. I believe in your death, burial, and resurrection. Once you do that, you're saved. That's what saves you. Nothing else. Jesus did it all. Jesus paid it all. It's that powerful blood and his death, burial, and resurrection. And once you believe that, God will put his Holy Spirit in you. You'll be sealed until the day of redemption. He'll never let you go. He won't let you out of the palm of his hand. You'll spend eternity in paradise with God. It's, it's, it's such an incredible gift. How do we even put into words what a gift that is? We do the sinning and rebelling. He does the dying and shedding of blood. He takes our sin. We get his righteousness. You know... He'll probably have the marks in his hands forever and ever. And we'll have perfect bodies in heaven. It's all due to him. Makes you want to hit your knees and just say, praise you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. And the flip side is if you hear this and you're just like, I, I just don't want that. I don't need that. I don't th really think I'm a sinner. Or I I'm more good than bad. I'm just going to take my chances. It's like, that's a horrible... That's a horrible outcome with that. If you, I, all I've talked about is that Jesus made a payment for everyone's sin. But if you say, I don't need that, then you're not getting the payment for your sin. And what's going to happen is you're, if you continue this until you take your last breath is you're going to show up in eternity. You're going to show up on judgment day, kneeling before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords who paid for your sins with his blood but you rejected the payment and you're going to know I'm in the presence of God and he's going to say away from me. Oh, I never knew you. And you'll be led off to eternal separation from God, also known as hell. And you won't think you're a bad God for doing this. You're going to know, like I heard that my sins were paid for and I just kept saying, no, 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 no. I don't want that. I don't need that. You need it. I always tell you guys, if I gave this message, if a if hundred people who have never heard about Christ heard this message for the first time, they heard the last 10 minutes of this video, I really believe 97 would say, no, nah, I don't want to believe that. That's crazy. I'll take my chances. And three would say, oh, Jesus, my Lord and my God, thank you. You know, wide is the path to destruction, but... Now it's your decision. You know, I all I can do is lay out the message. I try to lay it out as clearly as I can and simple. And now let the war, Lord work on your heart. 
I'm hoping he's drawing you and I'm hoping you respond accordingly. I, if you feel like this was truth, you run to Jesus. You run to him. All right, I'm gonna shut the camera off and I'm gonna say a prayer for every person who watched this video. And if we're not raptured today, and man, today is a perfectly good day for the rapture. But if not, God willing, I will see you guys tomorrow. I love you guys.